P2K was given a limited amount of time to both be completely designed and built and to prove itself as being a viable product. We were slated to be done in 18 months. You know, there's no way we could design a, a, a new electronic system and a software system and a game and then all the mechanical um, pieces to put it all together in that kind of time frame. Now our next job was to figure out how are we going to get a video game running in our pinball cabinet. And I went over to the Midway guys um, to try to hopefully leapfrog on what they did and save a lot of R&D work on our end. They were going to, in the summer of 98, come out with their new PC-based you know, next generation system. And I'm like, great, well, you, know, you guys develop it, we'll take it, and we can concentrate on the 50 other things that we need to do. Cutting to the end of that scene, that system never got done while Pinball 2000 was, uh, was going on. I think we looked at putting a Nintendo or a PlayStation in the box at one point. Again, we were looking for something with really low cost that would, could also get the job done without us doing a lot of R&D. The graphics for Pinball 2000 were primarily, you know, were obviously not, were a lot more advanced than that Matrix. It was, uh, so now you're doing, you know, multiple colors, a lot better resolution. You're you're not doing real 3D, but you're rendering out if you, if need be 3D elements, and very much like a like a video game, probably around, you know, Super Nintendo type era kind of technology, just again with now a big convoluted joystick of balls and targets and flippers. Here we were taking a game that had, you know, that had uh, 70 years of history in one way and we were trying to do something in a different way. And anytime you're dealing with that big a leap in technology, you have to be very careful that you don't totally mystify the end user with what it is you're doing. And so you had to make it, in my mind, you had to keep parts of it looking like, you know, a pinball machine inside it. And what was it going to do and how are you going to do that? People don't accept massive change all at once. They like seeing little change at a time. Um, you know, it's, you have to be careful. You have to be careful how much you ask people to swallow all at once without totally losing them. There are detractors that said that we that we inherently removed what pinball was, and I would I would argue with that. I would say that you had a chance in a good design to to both have mechanical things in the game and have elements of video in the game that you could meld and to interact with each other. There, there was just a lot more you could do. It just added to your bag of tricks of what you could do in a pinball machine. At one point in time, somebody had asked me, you know, did you envision that this was going to replace pinball as we knew it, conventional pinball? And you know what's funny to me is that, that when, even when I pitched, you know, Pinball 2000 as we knew it, um, it always occurred to me that, that there might be room for both products, that there was a a traditional line, if you will, a classic line, and then there was this Pinball 2000 line. Now, from the company's financial standpoint, it was either or. And so, for that reason, I think that, that they just said, you know, hey, you know, we back, we don't have the resources, you know, your business is dying, we don't have the resources to go and continue this other thing, which is not that profitable. We had number of iterations of case in point the uh, box that holds the CPU and all the electronics up in the top it works in the drawer uh, the way the cables plugged in the way the power plugged in just it was like yeah this is good but it would have been better if we had done it this way um, in a in a different time 
Somebody went on, yeah, well, it would have been a good idea had we thought of it then, but now it's too late. Nobody ever said it was too late. Maybe everybody kind of had a feeling that, you know, this was our last, you know, our last effort. And we, you know, we were going to put our best foot forward no matter what. We had roughly 50 guys in design and engineering uh, associated to it. And uh, it was professionally an incredibly uh, rewarding time for me because he just let me have the run of the show in terms of the design of this thing. The, the coolest thing about this is there were, there were thousands of problems. I mean, thousands of problems every day. It was like we'd solve one and three more would crop up. And every guy on the project was contributing in some way. I mean, ideas came from everywhere. You know, we, we had you know, a technician in, in the lab that would build up, a, a technician would build up games would come up with something. Hey, you know what, this has always been a bitch to do, but I had this idea that if you do it this way and this way, you know, turn the connectors this way and it'll be a lot easier. A lot of people have said, you know, why is the on-off switch in Pinball 2000 where it is, which is sort of an awkward place? It's because Jim Patla and, and some of the cable guys decided that there was, there was three bucks to be had by, by taking this much length out of the cable harness. So literally, the switch got moved back to find th those couple of dollars. And so my entire day was a series of meetings dealing with issues and generating ideas and giving direction. And then at night, it was my time alone with the game proper. What's the game proper?